Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favourite books from 2018. I know that it's a little late and we're a couple months into the new year, but I had taken my time getting around to it and I was lucky enough to read so many amazing books in 2018 and I can't wait to talk to them about with you guys. So the first book that I've got to talk about I don't actually have with me at the moment. I have lent this book out immediately. It is amazing. Um, it is called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I didn't know what to expect going into this book but it was amazing. It was everything that I wanted and more and I highly highly recommend it. I love the cover of this book and I think that's why I initially picked it up but then like reading it I just I couldn't put it down and I immediately wanted to reread it and I didn't want the story to end and it was just amazing. So the title pretty much gives away most of it so it follows the story of Evelyn Hugo who is this classic movie star and the different husbands that she goes through in her lifetime. So she decides to get a young reporter to basically write out her story and publish it as a book deal but it is this amazing ride where you get to learn who Evelyn really is and these different husbands and the choices that she made in her life and it is phenomenal. I absolutely loved it and I highly recommend it. I don't know if I've said that already but just trust me on this one, you need to read it. It is fantastic. The next book is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I originally wasn't going to pick this book up because I'm not a fan of John Green's writing and I was worried that his brother would be very similar but at Dimmick when I went in there they had the book signed and like I'm not someone who can say no to a signed book so I picked it up, I went into it with zero expectations and I was amazed by how good it was. Amazing and well written and well thought out and the concept for the twist in this was really really cool. The only thing that I didn't like about this book was at the very end when there wasn't more pages which unfortunately happens in books a lot. So in this book you have a young girl called April and one day April is out on the street and all of a sudden she sees this like transformer samurai looking statue that's just landed in the middle of the street that wasn't there before and so she decides to get her friend Andy to come and video her basically talking to it and she becomes a viral sensation overnight because it turns out that these different transformer samurai looking things popped up all over the country and no one knows why. Then the mystery continues and April pretty much becomes like the lead to try and figure out what these things are and what they're doing. It was a very quick and fun read, the humour in it was really good, I enjoyed it and April's a character, she's kind of very realistic in the sense that she is problematic and she makes some stupid choices and her sarcasm is on point and I think that really made me like this book a lot. Next up we've got Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So I wanted to read Brandon Sanderson for quite a while but I have been put off his books because I don't really know where to start and then he brought out this one which I was in a very big sci-fi mood at the time so I picked it up and I really really enjoyed it. It was really good and it has definitely convinced me that I will sooner rather than later start reading his other books. So in this book you follow a young girl called Spencer and she wants to train to become a pilot to basically fight against the Krell. And the Krell are these alien species that are stopping Earth people from leaving Earth and they're constantly attacking them like they're trying to eradicate the human species. So you get to follow Spencer as she goes to a different flight school, as she kind of has to go into these battles with the Krell and why it is even happening plus other mysteries involved too. I also in 2018 read a couple of non-fiction books which surprised me. Um, um, one that I really really enjoyed was a biography by Adam Kay and it is the diaries of a junior doctor and it has all the reasons why he started his career, um, things that happened to him during his career and why he ultimately left his job as a junior doctor. This was actually so good, I didn't know what to expect, it's a very very quick read, it's funny and it's also heartbreaking at the same time and it's also just been given I think the rights to have a TV show made from it which is really really cool. If you guys are looking for something to try outside of your regular genres and you want to look at a biography or a non-fiction definitely look at this one because it's a very easy and fun one to kind of bridge that gap into going into that genre. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and this was fantastic. I really loved it. I don't know much about Greek mythology and things like that so there were certain characters and names that I was like who? But regardless of that I still loved everything about this. Madeline Miller, her writing has to be one of the best writing styles I have ever read. I don't really want to say the characters names out loud because I'm not going to say it right. Like you know when you're thinking of a name in your head and it sounds right and then you try to pronounce it and it doesn't come out the way that you think. That's how I feel about the main character. Patroculus. Terrible. Anyway, so we follow him um, as his journey as he meets Achilles, how they become friends, how they develop feelings for each other, and the journey that they go on to. Plus, it's 
just amazing. It was a really, really great story, um, absolutely heartbreaking. Um, I'm still trying to mend my heart after reading this book. Speaking of absolutely heartbreaking books, I was sobbing during this next one. I didn't expect to like cry as much as I did. This was my first Adam Silvera book and I immediately read all the other ones after it, but this one is They Both Die at the End. You would think that having the title They Both Die at the End would prepare you for some of the heartbreak, but I can assure you, it doesn't. In the world that we have here, there is a place called Death Cast which will call you when you are going to die that day. So you could die within the first hour of the day to the first 24 hours, but regardless, you will die that day. You follow two main characters which are Mateo and Rufus and both of them don't know each other, but they both get a call from Death Cast on the same day. They then proceed to join an app where you can make friends or romances on your death day and that's how they became friends. Both of them were going to die and they decided to reach out and spend the day with somebody. Just as heartbreaking as it sounds, I tell you. So if you guys really feel like having a cry, definitely pick this one up. It is such a sweet and amazing story, and Adam Silvera's writing style is fantastic as well. So I have three more books left for you guys. This one has easily become one of my all-time favorite books ever, and that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. So in this one you have Darrow, and Darrow is a red who is this like lower caste of human society that get treated like trash but they need it because they have to make um, Mars habitable for all these people to come up and live there because Earth is now destroyed because we probably ruined it. Until the day that Dara's wife is killed and Dara then begins to start asking questions and he realizes that he's been lied to his entire life and that Mars is already populated and they are just getting slaved away thinking they're doing the right thing when it's not even needed. And so Dara decides to get revenge and he makes himself into a goal, which are the people who are at the top of the ladder and he goes into their school and basically attempts to kick all their asses. And if that doesn't make you want to read it, then the fact that I approve of this badass fantasy slash dystopia novel that is extra brutal with stabby stabby blood blood and crazy epic plotline and wonderful characters, then I don't know what will. The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. This is the first book in The Gentleman Bust and I think that that really <laughs> tops up the series really well because there are characters in this who are absolute bastards but you love them so much anyway. Definitely look at the series, um, I don't have much to say about it but if you like fantasy just pick it up, like you don't need me to tell you what it's about, just trust me on this one, you're gonna wanna read it. And last but not least, my favourite author of all time released a new book this year, and that one is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. This book, the start of it, the first 50 to 80 pages was so so slow, but then it picked up and it went into that classic Marcus Zusak style, where you get sucked into this book and his characters and his writing style, and you just have all these different ranges of emotions, and I loved it, I loved it so much. I cried. I cried multiple times in this, not even gonna lie. It's not a book that you can just pick up and absentmindedly read. It's not an easy read. It's definitely something that, as I said, you have to work for. So this one is a very Australian-based novel. It features five brothers. Their father is nowhere to be seen and their mother has passed away. And it's told through two kind of point of views. So you get the point of view um, of the mother as they were growing up and you get to see her, which is like really heartbreaking because you know she passes away. And then you also have the point of view of one of the brothers um, in the current time as they are basically aging and it's it's a lot like there is so much in this the characters are so realistic and it just it was an emotional and fantastic read and I think that the Australian aspects of it really really shine through so if you guys are after like an Australian novel definitely take a look at this one so there you guys have my favorite reads from 2018 there's probably more of them but those are just the ones that I immediately picked off the shelf because I just I just love them so much. I will be back with another video next week and that one will be my least favourite reads of 2018. There isn't as many of those as my favourite ones, which is a good thing, I'm glad about that, and I will talk about why I don't like them in my next video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys again soon.